is Nura Mina from NAMI, Montana. I want to speak to you for a few minutes today about an important development in mental illness research. The National Institute of Mental Health Research Domain Criteria, or RDOC. RDOC grew out of an agency's goal to develop new ways of classifying mental disorders based on behavioral dimensions and neurobiological measures. In the opinion of this humble neuron, it's a great effort because the interactions of over a hundred billion neurons in the brain are incredibly hard to understand. The need for a more systematic framework to tie together this research has only become clearer as the technologies capable of adding valuable information about brain function has increased. For instance, it's going to take a clear research framework to ensure that the information gathered through combinations of psychological surveys, fMRI brain scans, EEG recordings, genetic testing, blood work, and other tools clarifies our understanding of the brain, rather than making things murkier by piling on seemingly unconnected data. Here is the RDOC matrix. The domains, constructs, and subconstructs are on the left side of the matrix. We'll get into those in more detail. But in absolute layman's terms, these are characteristics of brain functioning, such as how a brain responds to fear, how a brain responds to threat, how do you visually perceive images, how are your sleep cycles, etc. The top of the graph is composed of the units of measure. In layman's terms, these are different ways that you can measure brain function. For instance, researchers may use psychological self-report surveys, genetics, brain circuits shown in fMRI scans, descriptions of the specific kinds of cells involved, molecules that may function as neurotransmitters. We'll go back to the broad view of our RDOC matrix in a second, but I think it helps to start with the analysis of a very specific brain function characteristics. Specifically, how does a person respond to acute fear? Start by going to NIMH's webpage for the Research Domain Criteria Matrix. Then, click on the Acute Threat Fear link. That link will open up and shows a number of different units of analysis for research in acute threat fear. Some of the units of analysis for acute threat study include genes such as BBNF and 5-HT, 5-HTRs, molecules such as dopamine and serotonin, cells like neurons, glia, and pyramidal cells, circuits such as the central nucleus, physiological characteristics like skin conductance and heart rate, behavioral characteristics such as freezing and response time, psychological self-report surveys such as the fear survey schedule and fear questionnaire, and psychological paradigms like fear conditioning. This framework provides a comprehensive breakdown of the methods and measures to analyze acute threat. The units of analysis can illuminate potential connections between brain function characteristics. The list of the units of analysis can also help identify brain function characteristics that have significant research gaps. For instance, clearly, language doesn't happen without molecules acting as neurotransmitters and cell transmitting information, so there's a likely need to reevaluate prior research or conduct new research to better understand those units of analysis for this brain function characteristic. Now that I've given you a little depth on units of analysis, let's look harder at the other side of the graph and the brain function characteristics we mentioned. NIMH describes the rows as specific functional constructs representing a specific function dimension of behavior. Those constructs are grouped into domains based upon the current understanding of emotion, cognition, motivation, and social behavior. There are currently five domains in the RDOC matrix. The five domains are negative balance systems, positive balance systems, cognitive systems, systems for social processes, and the arousal of regulatory system. The negative balance systems are the system primarily responsible 
for responses to aversive situations or contexts, such as fear, anxiety, and loss. The positive balance systems are the systems primarily responsible for responses to positive and motivational situations or contexts, such as reward seeking, consumatory behavior, and reward or habit learning. The cognitive systems are the systems responsible for various cognitive processes. The systems for social processes are the systems that mediate responses to interpersonal settings of various types, including perception and interpretation of others' actions. The arousal regulatory systems are the systems responsible for generating activation of neural systems as appropriate for various contexts and providing appropriate homeostatic regulation of such systems as energy, balance, and sleep. Once you've got a basic understanding of the art matrix, it's easy to see how it opens up the door for really cool multi-dimensional brain research. For instance, how many subconstructs are impacted by a deficiency in a specific molecule that acts as a neurotransmitter? Similarly, what subcontracts are impacted by trauma? What units of analysis identify factors related to resiliency to trauma? There are so many questions in the field of mental illness research. We're really excited to see what answers the research domain criteria framework can help address and what new questions are opened up from there.